The gods of Dungeons and Dragons are ancient beings of near limitless power, each commanding great magics, legions of angels and faithful worshippers, and absolute authority over their domains. You would be forgiven for assuming the gods did not feel mortal desires, but this is not true. There are many gods, each with their own unique personalities, agendas, and desires. They fight, they love, they even reproduce with one another. The production of such a union is called an Empyrean. The Empyreans are the divine children of the gods of the Upper Plains. Paragons of perfection, they appear as towering humans with statuesque figures, perfect beautiful faces, and shine with divine confidence and charisma. All Empyreans bear a striking visage. Firstly, they are enormous. The average size of an Empyrean is 25 feet tall, making them as tall as Storm Giants. But unlike the Storm Giants, they are gorgeous. Their bodies ripple with well-defined muscle, and their skin has the color and texture of sublimely smooth marble, giving them a statuesque appearance. Even the features of their faces seem perfect. Nothing about them is out of place. Should you be unfortunate enough to become the enemy of an Empyrean, you will realize quickly that their beauty is matched only by their power. Having divine parentage makes them incredibly tough. In fact, most mundane weapons harmlessly bounce off of their skin, as if refusing to cut it. Any weapons that are imbued with magic will not likely cut the skin of an Empyrean because it is as tough as living marble. Not only that, but the Empyreans are so extremely strong that they often fight Baylors and dragons just for a challenge. Wielding great swords or massive mauls, the Empyreans swing with reckless abandon, pulverizing anything unfortunate enough to be hit. Being struck in this way is like being struck by a god. Their blows are so powerful that if you are not simply pulverized in one strike, you will be stunned as the blow literally knocks all wind out of you. Should an Empyrean find themselves surrounded, they will strike the ground with their incredible might. The effects of such a blow are like a small earthquake, knocking all but the strongest of creatures off their feet. Such raw strength, beauty, and towering height has given the Empyreans the common name of Celestial Titans. Now their raw strength alone would make them a real threat, but the Empyreans are the children of gods, and that means magic. The celestial magic within their blood makes them natural-born sorcerers. They can cast spells like Greater Restoration, Earthquake, and even Planar Shift without the need for spellcasting focuses or material components. All Empyreans, even those who do not bother to train their magical abilities, can concentrate this innate magical energy outward as a bolt of devastation, a blast of raw magic that can take on whatever form the Empyrean wishes at it is cast, be it a blast of fire, lightning, or even divine radiant magic. All are at the Empyrean's command so they are never at a disadvantage when battling against creatures that have resistances or immunities to specific elements. On the battlefield, Empyreans will cast great bolts of fire and lightning against creatures who are beyond their physical reach, such as flying dragons or demons. However, few creatures are out of an Empyrean's reach, as they can move quickly on land, water, and sky. The Empyreans are all capable of flight. However, it is not like any flight of natural creatures like birds or the effects of a flying spell. Rather, the Empyrean runs on air as if it were solid ground. This gives them the leverage they need to swing their massive weapons. The gifts of their divine blood do not end there, as Empyreans are also highly resistant to magic. Any spell that would attempt to harm or take control of an Empyrean loses most of its effectiveness. It is important to note that the Empyreans are not immune to magic, and a skilled wizard could possibly frighten, paralyze, or even charm an Empyrean to their side. It is just extremely difficult to do so, also ill-advised. 
Empyreans are prideful and will take great offense to mortals manipulating their mind. Their weapons are also magical, being forged by celestial smiths or gifted to them by their godly parents, all Empyrean weaponry is generally magical. Their weapons are always great weapons, great swords, mauls, great axes, or giant clubs. An Empyrean also hardly ever uses a shield, preferring to crush their foes with overwhelming force and relying on their innate defenses to keep them alive. All this power, physical and magical, stems from their divine blood. The blood of a god is extremely powerful and those that carry even a little of it have powers that the most experienced wizard may not have. The more divine blood you carry, the greater those powers are. But this does not make the Empyreans true gods. I will return to that question in a moment. Unlike the angels who feel hardly any emotion, Empyreans are strongly emotional creatures. This does not mean they fly off the handle in rage or melancholy at the slightest provocation, they simply feel their emotions deeper than most mortal creatures. And when they feel it, the world around them feels it. When an Empyrean is sad, the skies darken with clouds, leaves fall from trees, and nearby animals simply die. By contrast, when the celestial titans are happy, sunlight shines brightly on them, Flowers blossom in their footsteps, and small animals merrily frolic around the titan. This is a reflection of a god's ability to literally change the physical world around them to suit their desires, only to a much lesser degree, and this effect dissipates shortly after the Empyrean leaves. Apart from their ability to physically manifest their emotions, the very presence of an Empyrean can bolster the will of allies. Similar to the effects of the Bless spell, the perfect, divine presence of an Empyrean is enough to fill all allied creatures with the will to fight against all odds. Creatures under this effect cannot be charmed or frightened, and find greater success in whatever they do for a short time. The final boon granted to the Empyreans by their divine blood is, of course, immortality. Empyreans do not age. It is unknown if they are born directly in this form, or if they are born as children and mature only to their physical prime, never aging a day beyond it. In fact, many Empyreans boast that their divine blood is so strong that not even magic can force them to age beyond their physical prime. But do not be fooled. Empyreans can be slain. It is simply extremely difficult to do so. The only real weakness an Empyrean possesses is their ego. They are so self-assured, so confident in their perfection and their victory, that they charge into battle without a plan, swinging recklessly at whatever seems to be the strongest opponent, only fighting smart when they are put on the back foot and never retreating and Empyrean's pride simply does not allow them to back down. Should you find yourself in combat with an Empyrean, use this ego and pride against them. It may be your only chance. Empyreans, having come from the heavens of the Upper Plains, are generally good by nature. They do not actively seek out to commit evil deeds. Deeds driven by malice or a desire to spread misery and discontentment is repulsive to most Empyreans. It is simply antithetical to their nature as celestial beings. Most Empyreans, if not provoked, are benevolent if a bit prideful, and are generally described as being pleasant to be around and have conversations with. That being said, the celestial titans are also chaotic by nature. Much like the children of incredibly wealthy families, Empyreans see themselves as being able to do what they wish without fear of consequence. After all, their power is so great that many of them pick fights with Baylors just to prove how strong they are, and they are always secure in the knowledge that should they perish, they will always be resurrected by their divine parents. But should you encounter an Empyrean in the prime material world, you should beware, 
for this is likely an Empyrean that has fallen to the forces of evil. Sometimes an Empyrean will be corrupted by an evil god, but usually the corruption is a result of that Empyrean's own pride. Remember how I said that some Celestial Titans will fight Baelors? In order to do this, they would need to travel into the Abyss, the realm of demons. This is extremely dangerous. Though the endless hordes of lesser demons may not be a problem for the Empyreans, the Abyss itself has an influence over those that visit them, just like any other realm. For example, if you were to travel into the Nine Hells and stay there for a bit, you would find yourself slowly changing. Over time, you would become cruel, ambitious, and manipulative, just like the devils that inhabit the Hells. This is the power of that realm infecting you and corrupting you. No creatures, with the exception of gods, are immune to this. That includes the Empyreans. The Celestial Titans that venture too far into the Lower Plains, or stay there for too long seeking their glory, are often corrupted, becoming evil. An evil Empyrean is extremely dangerous. Their confidence twisted into a terrible pride that seeks dominion over all lesser beings. Evil Empyreans are capable of traveling back to the Upper Plains, but none would dare do this. Despite their pride, they are not stupid. Empyreans are in fact extremely intelligent. They know that now as beings of evil, the Upper Plains would be hostile to them. The plane itself would eat away at their very essence, while they themselves are torn apart by legions of vengeful angels. So, they travel to the Prime Material World to begin a campaign of conquest, easily taking over a mortal kingdom and ruling over it as an indomitable tyrant. Despite the inherent danger, many mortal kingdoms bow to evil Empyreans. After all, the Celestial Titans are paragons of perfection, and whether they are good or evil, they ooze a godly kind of charisma, easily persuading others to their side. The problem arises when the disconnect between the needs of mortal creatures and the desire of the immortal tyrant begin to conflict. Mortals require food, water, rest, and shelter. But beings such as Empyreans require none of those things, they only demand reverence and tribute. So if an evil Empyrean is not disposed or destroyed by a group of brave heroes, the kingdom they rule over will generally wither away and starve to death. It is important to note that evil Empyreans are generally less reckless in combat than good Empyreans. While they do not fathom the idea of being bested by the hands of mortals, they are aware that their divine parents have likely forsaken them after their corruption, and understand that should they perish, no resurrection will be awaiting them. Much like human children, the personalities of Celestial Titans are greatly affected by their parents. An Empyrean born to a god of knowledge might be studious, with a love of books and a strong desire to learn, while an Empyrean born to a god of justice will have a drive to mete out said justice by punishing the wicked. This all comes from the respect that the Empyreans feel for their parents, the gods, the only beings they see as being equal to or better than themselves. For example, if you were to request an Empyrean's help, they may offer it, but if you were to demand their help, they would simply ignore you. Empyreans do nothing under direct order unless that order comes from their god. And it must be their god, one of their divine parents or a relation thereof. Empyreans will hardly listen to gods outside of the pantheons that their parents are a part of. Now, an Empyrean is hardly ever chosen as an agent for a god, unless the mission in turn is to destroy some incredibly powerful fiend or abomination that is threatening that god's worshippers. This is because the gods have their angels. The angels are powerful celestial beings in their own right, and most importantly, have no will of their own. Angels follow their god's will to the letter, 
An Empyrean, on the other hand, will carry out a request from their god, but they will do so on their own terms. Remember, all Empyreans are chaotic by nature, and this makes them unpredictable when roused to action. For example, if a god of justice hears of a very powerful mortal who has escaped his heinous crimes against that god's faithful by turning himself into a powerful lich, he might send down an angel or an Empyrean to mete out justice. The Angel of Justice will track the undead monster down, assist heroes in capturing it or defeating it, and dragging it back to be judged. An Empyrean given this task would be much more direct. It would track the Lich down, but then it would destroy it, probably killing, by accident of course, a few of the mortal adventurers that were assisting it. The Empyrean would see nothing wrong with this, as justice has been met out and mortals die every day. That was an oversimplification, but you understand the point. Empyreans make great weapons of destruction, but very poor servants. So the gods rarely ever give them orders. Finally, to answer that burning question, can an Empyrean become a god? The answer is complicated. While the Empyreans are capable of ascending, few have ever done so. Being a god means you have to foster worship from your mortal followers. You must listen to their prayers, bestow blessings and miracles upon them, and offer them guidance when they seek it. That is something that most Empyreans simply have no interest in. They are already towering paragons of divine perfection. What more could they want? <laughs> Having trouble with a single Garistro? Step aside, little ones. I'll crush that demon for you with one arm. Trust me, I've done it before. Thank you guys so much for watching. I spent a lot of time working on this video, so I really, really hope you enjoy it. On this channel, I'm putting together narrative Dungeons & Dragons lore videos for every monster, spell, and setting has a story. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support the channel, then make sure to subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Be sure to leave a comment down below about what Dungeons & Dragons topic you want to see me cover, and I'll make it into a video. Check out my social media in the description below, and I'll see you in the next one.